When asked about his message, Gandhi said, my life is my message. And I think the same can be said of Gary Barnes. Gary is the breakthrough business mastery coach. He's a high performance business and sales coach, popular international speaker, and award winning number one international amazing Amazon and amazing best selling author of six books. He has clients that span over seven countries and he's been featured on ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, PBS, and TEDx. He's the founder of Gary Barnes International. He's created several successful businesses personally, selling over $280 million in product and services. So he knows what he's talking about. He's been married over 40 years. He has two adult sons. He's completed a world-class 40-foot fire walk. He's flown a World War II P-51 fighter, flown on the trapeze, driven in a destruction derby. His car was named the Purple Passion. He completed a 75-foot bungee jump and climbed 14-footer 14, 14, uh, 14,000 feet mountains. He's a drummer and a police academy graduate. He also understands dealing with adversity and he's going to tell you about that. He's fought a life-threatening illness and won. He believes that your worst day is the day that you meet the man or woman you could have been. It's a choice. So get your paper and your pens ready and please help me welcome the inspirational motivational, uncontainable Gary Barnes. You got good with time without crying? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. I mean, it's been, what, two or three years since I was here? December 2nd, 2015. <laughs> 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 that was a day Gordon's life changed. <laughs> 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 It was Robin's visitation day. It was your very first time here, I believe. And we still can't get rid of her. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, keep it quiet, though. <laughs> so, you know, it's those little trivia facts. On, you know, you, you need to be in that scribe. It was a big day for me. Well, it, it's really a privilege. Thank you for the leadership team for inviting me back. And Jackson, uh, we've stayed connected all these years, as well as Gordon and many of, uh, some of the rest of you. So let me ask you, do you really believe that you can reboot your brain for success. Now, I think just because you guys are all here, and many of you were here when I spoke last time. How many of you were here last time? I didn't, see, I was afraid of that, so this is a different talk. Because <laughs> he would remember. <laughs> and so what I wanted to do is talk about success, but I really believe you already have success. I had a mentor early, early in my career. I had one of the largest financial planning firms in the country, top 3% in production being a solo producer. And what it ended up happening is I got to meet some of the very mentors, big people in the industry that were you know, willing to share. And what they said was, the only thing that it takes to succeed in any business, here's a secret, this may be a writer downer, is to last. Mm -hmm. Is to last. You have to be there when your ship comes in. You have planted seeds, you need to be there for the harvest. And so rebooting your brain, it really should be to your next level of success, not to success. Because everyone here has a different definition of that. We're in different places in our business. As Jackie said, people have asked me when I will retire. And I know I don't even know what that is because the Social Security Administration says what? We have about 18 months after we retire before we're no longer here. I don't like those odds. So I'm never retiring. But you know, the reality is this is what I do, or this is who I am, not what I do. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a video, and then we'll come back and really dive into it. Rise and shine. It's 6 a.m. and your hand can't make it to the alarm clock before the voices in your head start telling you that it's too early, too dark, and too cold to get out of bed. Aching muscles lie still in rebellion pretending not to hear your brain commanding them to move. A legion of voices are shouting their unanimous permission for you to hit the snooze button and 
go back to dreamland. But you didn't ask their opinion. The voice you've chosen to listen to is one of defiance. A voice that says there was a reason you set that alarm in the first place. So sit up, put your feet on the floor, and don't look back, because we've got work to do. Welcome to the grind. For what is each day but a series of conflicts between the right way and the easy way. 10,000 streams fan out like a river delta before you, each one promising the path of least resistance. Thing is, you're headed upstream. And when you make that choice, when you decide to turn your back on what's comfortable, what's safe, and what some would call common sense, well, that's day one. From there, it only gets tougher. So just make sure this is something you want, because the easy way out will always be there, ready to wash you away. All you have to do is pick up your feet. But you aren't going to, are you? With each step comes the decision to take another. You're on your way now, but this is no time to dwell on how far you've come. You're in a fight against an opponent you can't see, but oh, you can feel him on your heels, can't you? Feel him breathing down your neck. You know what that is? That's you. Your fears, your doubts, and insecurities all lined up like a firing squad, ready to shoot you out of the sky. But don't lose heart. While they're not easily defeated, they are far from invincible. Remember, this is the grind, the battle royale between you and your mind, your body, and the devil on your shoulder who's telling you that this is just a game. This is just a waste of time. Your opponents are stronger than you. Drown out the voice of uncertainty with the sound of your own heartbeat. Burn away your self-doubt with the fire that beneath you. Remember what we're fighting for and never forget that we're men is a cruel mistress. She can turn out a dime with the smallest mistake. She is ever searching for the weak place in your armor, that one tiny thing you forgot to prepare for. So as long as the devil is hiding the details, the question remains, is that all you got? Are you sure? And when the answer is yes, when you've done all you can to prepare yourself for battle, then it's time to go forth and boldly face your enemy, the enemy within. Only now you must take that fight into the open, into hostile territory. You're a lion in a field of lions, all hunting the same elusive prey with a desperate starvation that says victory is the only thing that can keep you alive. So believe that voice that says you can run a little faster, and you can throw a little harder, that for you, the laws of physics are merely a suggestion. Luck is the last dying wish of those who want to believe that winning can happen by accident. Sweat, on the other hand, is for those who know it's a choice. So decide now, because destiny waits for no man. And when your time comes, and a thousand different voices are trying to tell you you're not ready for it, listen instead to that lone voice of dissent. The one that says you are ready, you are prepared. It's all up to you now. So rise and shine. I love that video except for that alarm clock sound. <laughs> you know, you guys are dedicated because you get up every morning and you have been maintaining this relationship here. And so one of the things, a number of things that I'm going to be covering today are some strategies and tips and tools that you can use in your business today that's going to make a difference. Would you like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? Would you like that? Yeah. Okay, I know it's early and coffee may have not kicked in yet, but you know, you know, one of the things that I always tell audiences is that when a speaker asks a question of the audience, silence is not golden. So just think about this. This is a you know exchange back and forth. So one of the things that I am known for is a concept around the idea of no try. What is no try? And I'm in people's brain. What is no try? What does it mean? It means just say no. It's what? Just say no. You just say no? Okay. Well, something comes up and someone says, why don't you give it a try? And you just say no. Oh, I like that. That's the first time I've heard of position in that way. So where did the wisdom of no try come from? It was the wisdom of Yoda. Do or do not, there is no try. Literally. And people have, over the course of years, they have come to me, what about this? What about that? What about this situation? And they have yet to come up with something that was legitimately, because literally there is no such thing as try. And in some languages, there is no translation or or whatever that word is for the word try. See, I, you know, I just hired you know, I'm, going, I'm getting ahead of myself. But the idea is, is that when we say try, we're literally backing out. When I was playing sports in school, 
I never heard one time a coach say, we're going to go out and try to win today. Any of you play sports? You had sports in college or high school? Did you ever have a coach say, we're going to go out and try to win? <coughs> Listen to sportscasters today. They're going to try. They, the try word has infiltrated our language. And in my world, that is literally backing out before we go through the door. So let me give you an example. When somebody says they're going to try, do you think they're really committed? No. So here's how you could tell. When you're, let's say you're throwing a party Saturday night and you're inviting everyone here and you have half the group say, I'm going to try to make it. Are you putting a place setting out for them? No, they're just not wanting to tell you they're not coming. It really is a placating type of word for it. So I created a uh, schematic to show and showcase how the no-try concept actually can play out in our lives. So literally, the first part of it is we make a decision, a decision to do something. And then we put action to it, and then we get a result. At the point we get a result, and it's not a result that we want, that is not a result that we want, what do we call that? What are, what are we tempted to say then? I gave it the good old college truck, right? And so really it's an excuse. In reality, it's just a new point of decision. It's just a new point of decision. There is a concept that I've created over the years called launch and adjust. When we want something and we find something that works, what do you think we should do? Replicate it. Yeah, keep doing it. If it's not working, what's the definition of insanity? Absolutely. But how many times do we do that? Because how many of you really, you've got to be honest, how many of you really like change? So from us here, what I'm seeing is, <laughs> you know, we really don't. And so the thing is that we get into these cycles and we have to break the pattern. So it really comes down to beliefs. And I really hold the beliefs that facts are stories until they become beliefs. Facts are stories until they become beliefs. How many of you kind of want to argue with me about that right now? Uh, either it's too early or I've got a great group. So let me give you an example. It wasn't all that many years ago that we believed that it was a fact that the earth was flat. flat. Was it? No. But it was a belief. It was a common known fact. And that's what's really held back the, the ability to expand because they thought that there was a flag, you'd fall off the edge of it, there was monsters out there and all the rest. So we're very creative in our facts. So let me ask you today, is this a good economy or a bad economy? How many say a good economy? How many say a bad economy? How many won't vote no matter what? <laughs> there it goes. Come on, guys. But what I have realized, by getting back in the financial planning days, I went through four major downturns, including 9-11. Were those good or bad economies? Both, actually. See, I translated that instead of good or bad as challenging. And I found that every economy has challenges, so this is a challenging economy even today, which makes it normal. So this is where we launch and adjust. If I was to do business today, as I did in the 19, I hate saying this with younger people in the room, 1970s, 80s, 90s, some of you weren't even born. You know, or you studied it in school. Did I? It was one of those things. But the thing is, is that if I look at it as challenging, now I'm going to be able to address it for whatever it really is. So, 99% of the results that you have in your life right now are on purpose, either subconsciously or consciously. 99% of the results that you have in your life right now are on purpose either consciously or subconsciously. Now the important thing here is that this is really good news because if we have been programmed, what can we be? Reprogrammed. Reprogrammed. But what were we originally programmed? As a child. As a child, how? 
parents, family, school, church, peer pressure. It, it, we got it from all walks of life. But what we have, like my dad told me, and this I don't need to make him out to be a, a bad person because he really wasn't. He was doing it in his mind to protect me. But he said, you're just a dumb, fat Barnes. Just come into the family business. It didn't work for me. But I worked through that all the way through school. I was just stupid. I was dumb. Until I realized I took an algebra class and I got a B and I went, they must have made a mistake. And so the thing is, is that these beliefs that we hold, are they supporting you or are they not? So as we go through this, it really can have a direct impact on even life and death. 1988 was a very good year, and I'm going to tell you a very brief story about it. It was the year of the Olympics, there was an election that year, but for me it was one of the most challenging years of my life, because about Thanksgiving time, or well, right before Thanksgiving, 1988, there was something that happens in Colorado. Well, I'm not a native Californian. <coughs> I'm a native Californian. Don't get mad at me. I came here in 84. And everybody in California thought we were nuts for leaving there, and everybody here thought we were nuts for, you know, or leaving California. Anyway, they thought we didn't start, but we were early adopters. So, and before Thanksgiving, there's something that happens in Colorado. It's a four-letter word. What is it? Snow. Snow. With this kind of weather we've been having, you know, it kind of gives us a pre global warming. What happened to it? I, I, I'm not quite sure in this environment right now, we're having to put on the heater. But the thing is, in 1988, we had one of those early snows that was really heavy. I went out to shovel the snow, and about the third shovel in, I had a sharp pain in my right palm. That palm, it was it really hurt. And after a little bit, it started to subside, and I decided to finish the, the driveway. But by the time I got done, that pain had gone to numbness. That numbness had radiated up this arm across my chest, down this arm, down to my feet. I had lost all sense of feeling from my neck down. Do you think I told anybody? No. My wife worked for Porter Hospital. She was a manager there. I didn't tell anybody because I just knew I just needed a good night's sleep. I just had tweaked something. But in my mind, it was going to be okay. The next morning I get up, jump out of bed to test, and fall flat on my face. Within an hour, my wife has me in to see our primary care doctor. He looks at me, he does a couple of things, and this is not a, a reflection of doctors, but he looked at me and he, those sad eyes, and he goes, Gary, there's nothing I'm gonna be able to do for you. And I go, golly, there's gotta be something. He goes, no, you're gonna see the man upstairs. And I'm like, oh golly, they're really, he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. You're going to go up to the second floor to see the neurologist. <laughs> I went up to see the neurologist. He did things like poke you. And so he said, we're going to have one of the very new tests that we're going to have you do. And as I left the office, I said, what is it that you're looking for? He says, don't worry about it. I said, really, what, what are you looking for? Because he had it scheduled for midnight, Saturday night of Thanksgiving weekend. I didn't want to be bothered with it. I didn't have time for it. My practice was right in the middle of, you know, the production. I, 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 just, I didn't have time for this detour. But what he said was, you either have cancer, a brain tumor, or multiple sclerosis. I looked at the x-ray and I said, can I have door number four? And he said, go home, don't worry about it. It turned out, went back again, and he gave me, you know, I still had three choices. He said, you have MS. MS or MS, 1988. I go, great. To me, he gave me a life sentence. I said, what do we do? He said, you don't understand. You will be in a wheelchair or dead within 10 years. He was wrong. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm on bonus time. I'm on 17 years past his prediction. <laughs> One of the things that I did instinctively at that moment was I never said I had something. I, I have always said I was diagnosed with, which meant it was someone else's opinion. When we start looking at our circumstances, when we have things going on with us, if our finances are not where we want them to be, do we say I'm broke, I'm poor, 
whatever the bad economy. What are the things that oh, I'm losing my yeah, I know it's not there. I just felt it. I had very little feelings to my hands. And like, thank you very much for your clicker. But this was redesigned by one of my boys because I kept pushing without knowing. Because I still have no feelings in my hands. So I was shutting things off. I was oh, just, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, do I don't know how I did that. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to waste time. Do you know how to get it back? Sure. Okay. I, I tell Rob. <coughs> <laughs> I'm a delegator. You see how that works? I'm an artist. One of the artists. You're a delegator. So there, there's a payback coming, I can tell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the idea here is that. Thank you. The idea here Thanks. is how do we react to circumstances? How do we get over those speed bumps and those detours that we find in our lives and in our businesses? People over the years have asked me, am I, am I a business coach, am I a life coach? And this is how I describe myself. I'm a business coach that includes life. Because I don't think we can separate the two. If you have two calendars, one for your business and one for your life, for your family, I would suggest merging them. Because one will suffer if you don't. And so out of that experience, I did not tell anybody. I was right in the middle of my financial planning career. If you tell somebody you're going to die or somebody thinks you're going to die, do they give you money? Not normally. <laughs> you know, they, they have a little trepidation, so I just put it out of my mind. And I still had to deal with the symptoms, but I just moved forward. Fifteen years ago, I sold the practice. And uh, do you know who Joe Vitale is? Joe Vitale set out for a request of stories for Attractor Factor 2. It was the first time I wrote down that story. He had put it out, and all of a sudden I get this email with the hieroglyphics. Guys, it's the one like with Viagra commercial side. So I opened it up. <laughs> catch up with that a little bit. But the person on the other side was describing my story, the story of my challenge with the MS. And I went, Nobody knows about it. And he says, no, you're in Joe Vitale's book. And I got so excited. I went down to uh, Barnes & Noble and looked at Attractor Factor 2, and I wasn't in it. I went back, and I wrote this guy. I go, well, I don't see me. I, it's not in there. He goes, no, you're not in Attractor Factor 2. You're in a book called Expect Miracles. And he put your website address in it, and you're 1% of the book. I, it was the first time, but that was the first time I went, maybe somebody has an interest in hearing the story. How many of you have stories? How many of you have written a book? One of the things that I really suggest heavily is that all of you write a book. It doesn't have to be war and peace. But in your industry, how many of your competitors have written a book that will benefit your community? It elevates and separates you as being different from your competitors in a very positive way. But what happened out of that story is I finally, I had the first book I was going to write. I'm a speaker that has had to become a writer. I don't like writing. I really don't. I, well, in fact, I speak my books. I use Dragon because these are my typing fingers. I never learned how to type in school. Plus, I have no, no feelings. I just, I, maybe I dinged it again. But, so what happened was, this is the first book that came out. It is not the first title, though. The first title was Into the Night, The Road from Adversity to Triumph. And what had happened is that woman had heard me speak, purchased the book, and sent me a three-foot beaver. That beaver, and I went, oh, what, what is this? And so my coach at the time got so excited, he said, we're going to change the title to How a Beaver Saved My Life. That book has taken me to all of the major ABC, all the major uh, not channels, but what's it called? Yeah, Networks. PBS and TEDx called me to do TEDx, to do that story. So writing a book can be something very valuable. It's also not War and Peace. It's only 120 pages cover to cover. It's called an airplane book. That's what people want to invest in today. So what we talked about in Parliament, how do we get over those those things that really get in our way. So I'd like you to all stand up. We're going to do a little experiment. And those that
been in my boot camp, well, I'm going to do what you think I'm going to do. <laughs> so what I'd like you to do, and if you have any sort of back trouble, please be cautious. Don't really do something that we're going to hear about later. But what I want you to do is center your feet and take your hands and put your hands together right in front. And then I want you to turn as far as you can to the left. As far as you can to the left. You got it? Center that point. Know where that point is. You've gone as far as you can go. So, Bert, Bert just went further. <laughs> so, yeah. so, okay, so now come back to center. Okay, now can you visualize where that point was that you just went to? I want you to visualize a point on that right now. Can you see that point? Go there. Did you all go farther? Not much. <laughs> We all have a belly, you can have a seat. You know, sometimes what we do, and that's why I like that first video, is that first when we think we have, we've come to our limitations, but there's always a little bit more. And then some of these simple exercises and examples show us that we can do more. So, this is what I really want to teach you on today. There is a way to reprogram the brain, and it's the fastest way that I know to do it. It's called writing must statements, but I don't like the word must. I'm the type of guy that you tell me I have to do something, normally I'll go and do the opposite. I'm not proud of it, it's just how I am. So I changed up the word must for the word get. And the word get is an acronym for great expectations today. Now this is beyond affirmations, this is beyond goals and the desires that you have your dreams. This is the exact way that I have created and dealt with many of my clients, where even if they don't believe these work, it is how they've been able to achieve at a very high level. So do you guys see much work? And we've got a, <coughs> a little <coughs> video that I'm going to show you. This was my death statement. I tried with Sky Fighters by September 1, 2012. Hi everybody, this is Gary Barnes from Denver, Colorado, and I'm in Kissimmee, Florida right now. I just flew Crazy Horse, P-51. It was a phenomenal experience, and I just wanted to let you know that was one of my get statements, a get statement that became a reality. Hold on to your get statements, embrace your get statements, and they will be fulfilled. And I just wanted to share that with you, I'm excited. I can't wait to, to see you again, and the sky is the limit. Is that they, he showed me, he introduced me to his three year old son. 
And the pilot that I flew with is a former F-16 pilot. And he said, Gary, I just want to tell you, I am coming back from this sortie. And he stopped talking. I go, well, what about me? <laughs> and he goes, well, we're going to have three choices. We're either going to come back to this airport. If we have a problem, we're going to look for a very flat place to put the plane down. If that doesn't work, when I say eject, 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 by the time that third eject goes up, you will be alone in the airplane. Mm. And I went, oh, okay, I will follow instructions. But following the, the get statement was programming to be able to become aware of what the opportunities are. We are walking by opportunities every single day. You may have heard the story of the two shoe salesmen going to a, a third world country. Have you heard that story? Two shoe salesmen get off the airplane to a third world country, and the first shoe salesman goes immediately to the phone back to the home office and says, get me on the next plane back because no one here wears shoes. The second salesperson goes to the same payphone, calls his home office and says, send every pair of shoes you have in the warehouse because no one here wears shoes. Same opportunity, but one saw it and one didn't. And so what happens is that we are reprogramming something called the reticular cells. Have you heard about the reticular cells? Do you know what they are? It's literally a group of cells in the back of your brain that their sole function is to filter out all of the billions of information per second that's coming into our subconscious. If we didn't have the reticular cells, we would not be able to concentrate. But here's the kicker. It filters all of that information down to about 2,000 bits of information. So what pieces of information does it give you to pay attention to? And so this is how we start reprogramming. And so the get statement allows this imprinting, if you will, of the reticular cells for you to see what the opportunities are that other people are walking past. So this is a dreaming exercise, and we're not going to go through it, but what I'd like you to do is write these five questions down. Or you can take a picture of the screen too. It's what do I want to do? What do I want to have? What do I want to give? What, what do I want to be and where do I want to go? These five questions touch on every area of your life. Asking what you want to design in your life, using these questions will give you a balanced system out there. Because so much of the time we will get into ruts to where, well like I did, I went nine years without a vacation. I had created a lifestyle that I was not participating in. And my family was doing really well. They were having a lot of fun. But I was living, breathing the practice. I was out of balance. So asking these five questions will give you that balance back. Gary, is there a particular order? There isn't. There really isn't. All I say is, and I'll show you the, the design on how to use this in two more slides. But is, as you look at this, is picking a couple of things in each of these areas will give you that balance. And so, and be as very specific as you want. A lot of times when I ask the question, where do you want to go? Well, how many of you have places you want to go? You like to travel where? So where would you like to go? Hawaii. Paris. Paris. Hawaii. New Hawaii. Zealand. Hawaii. Africa. 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 New Zealand. Very nice. So let's take Africa. Mm -hmm. Where well, in Africa? I want to go on a safari. Uh, uh, where? <laughs> She How actually wants to shoot elephants. I don't know if you know this about Barney, but she's into black killing black big game. Black rifle. Yeah. Yeah. Black rifle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so probably Kenya area, uh, somewhere more in the center part of the country. So the more you can go down into the specifics of where you want to go, <coughs> where you want to stay. I've had people tell me, well, I just want to travel. I go, great. We're going to give you an all expense paid trip to Security Colorado. <laughs> Isn't that travel? They go, well, that's not where we want to go. Well, what are we programming? What are we seeing? I was very specific <coughs> that I wanted to fly with sky fighters. Now it adjusted. What I was doing, I flew Crazy Horse, which was not sky fighters. Sky fighters is dog fighting with planes, and I'll still be doing that. I have it on the guest units again for this year. But the idea here is getting as specific as possible. How many of you want a new car? 
doesn't have to be brand brand new. What kind of coat would you like? Uh, probably, uh, I've been thinking about this, BMW uh, SUV. Okay, which one? I don't know. Have you talked to you for that? It's all part of the puzzle. So this is where we get away from right, wrong, good, or bad. This is the order in which we do it. So but when we're looking at a new car, which one? Otherwise, you're going to end up with whatever. What color? Uh, I haven't decided. So what you programmed is you don't really want a car. Well, it's not important enough for you to really create it, to manifest it. And the same thing with money. So we're going to go through an example here of what a debt statement around money looks like. It will break it down. I receive $100,000 with $80,000 net revenue by December 15, 2017. Don't worry about the numbers. I just pulled them from there. But the, the first thing that's important in this statement is I receive. Did I say I work hard? Mm -hmm. Did I say if I get lucky? Nope. If somebody blesses me, and it's, I'm just in a position of receiving, it can come from any source. And then on the money side is two numbers. How many of you, and you don't have to raise your hand on this, but how many of you have a monetary goal for yourself, for your business this year, with only one number? One number. One number. You have two numbers? Well, one is number of properties under contract and then the other is a financial. Okay, is that so this is financial. Okay. Having two numbers on the financial is critical because we all, it doesn't matter if there's a W-2 employee or a 1099, you're an employee of the corporation, you have a gross and a net. Normally, we focus in on the gross number and then we get to the end of the year, we make our goal and it's not enough to do what we wanted to with because we had spent the bigger number. So having the gross and the net in your debt statement is something that's going to give you and serve you very well. The next thing is the word buy. I don't use the word on. When I use the word buy, buy, what could happen? It can come early. What happens when it comes early? <laughs> Gordon, you've been, uh, you're going to be front and center at the next weekend. <laughs> Yeah, give me an answer like that. <laughs> but yeah, it can happen early. Now, if it doesn't happen by that date, what can you do? Set a new date. You're in control of this. It's not a cliff, it's a progression. And then December 15th, and whatever year. Why did I choose December 15th? How many of you have your goals right now set for December 31st? I knew you did. So, can I play? Please. Do you like working the last two weeks of the year? No. You, you, your family kind of gets upset if you're not participating? Right. Yeah. So why did we plan to work for the last two weeks of the year? That's Probably planned. a boundaries issue. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it, it's an awareness issue. I, it's, it's a boundary, but it's an awareness. Why? See, we've been trained that we have our goals to the end of the year. Why? Who said so? It's when do we want it to end? Let's enjoy the last two weeks of the year with the revenue of the production that we've created and then be able to refocus, rejuvenate, and be ready for the first part of the year. 